Well, hello YouTube. I said last time that that, that, that was my last video on the uh, Fender Champ, but I, I guess I was lying because there's another one because I forgot I forgot to talk about the whole important feedback loop here, negative feedback loop, this loop. So uh, the output signal goes through that resistor, so it's a reduced signal, and then it comes back. Uh, not at the grid where the input is, but it goes back to the cathode, reducing distortion of the signal. All right, so let's get into it. Let's see why we need it. Okay, so this is your output signal. No negative feedback used yet. And as you can see, you have some distortion at the peaks. And this is your feedback signal. Uh, which is basically inverted, 180 out of phase. Uh, this is the general case. Usually the feedback, feedback signal is always understood to be uh, inverted. And this is now your new input signal with negative feedback used. And as you can see, the distortion at the peak is reduced, but also the amplitude is reduced. So you get a reduced gain, which is a, a bit of a problem you get reduce reduced distortion so if the feedback so if i go back to the uh, the champ here you have two choices the feedback you can either go to the grid or you can go to the cathode and here it's going to the cathode but you could have gone back to the grid so let's look at it if feedback if the feedback is applied to the grid the feedback signal the feedback signal should be inverted that is, that is 180 out of phase with respect to the input signal at the grid but if the feedback is applied to the cathode like in our case the feedback signal should actually be in phase so zero degrees should be in phase with respect to the input signal at the grid why okay i think I, i'm going to look at both cases the first the first one is very easy to see, the second one is a bit more uh, difficult. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Okay, the feedback applied at the grid must be 180 degrees out of phase. What happened? With respect to the input signal at the grid. Okay, so this, those, those are the voltages um, at the grid. I mean, at the grid and the cathode. So this is the cathode voltage, so that's your reference reference so the zero is probably doesn't matter really where the zero is what's important is the difference between the cathode voltage and the grid voltage so this is the cathode voltage so this one is uh, fixed constant so this is this one the the flat one is the dc voltage at the grid dc voltage at the grid this is the negative bias that you uh, apply so negative bias so that's the flat part the dc part and this solid black is your input signal. Input signal, the AC, the AC part. So in red is the feedback signal that's applied to the grid. So it's inverted. Okay. So it's in red. So it's 180 out of phase. And if you add them up, you end up with this, uh, this signal with the dots here so that's your negative negative feedback negative feedback signal so of course yeah it's easy to see that you're gonna have uh, less plate current and so less gain because the signal is smaller so that's obvious but that's not what we have in our champ and let's look at it the feedback is applied to the cathode when the feedback is applied to the cathode, it must be in phase, in phase, zero degree, so zero degree. It must be in phase with respect to the input signal at the grid. So again, same thing. This is the, the cathode, cathode voltage, the DC part. This is your DC voltage at the grid. So this is your negative bias and this is your input signal. But now the feedback signal is applied to the cathode. So it's riding here in red. So basically, if there are several ways to look at it. 
basically that feedback signal is modifying the, the bias, but that's one way of seeing it. I have another way of seeing it. So let's move on. That's going to be my, my last slide. What you have to remember is that when the grid, the cathode voltage increases, the plate current decreases and the gain decreases, which is what we want in a negative feedback loop. So let me try to explain. So in black is what, what you would have without feedback. So this is your uh, cathode, here the cathode voltage, the DC. This is the, the DC voltage at the grid, so the negative bias, your negative bias. And this is your input signal here. So this is your feedback. Feedback signal applied to the cathode. cathode. So if you if you look at without the red stuff, you just look at this. So this black voltage here, the black arrow. So this is the grid to cathode, grid to cathode voltage without negative feedback. So look at the amplitude of that vector. I mean the the length of the vector. And now look at it with negative feedback. Now the ground, the grid to cathode voltage with negative feedback is larger. It's larger now. So it means that the with negative feedback, the plate current is going to decrease. The plate current is going to decrease and the gain is going to decrease. Because the grid to cathode voltage increased. You may have to think about it to get it, but it's as if you had a uh, variable uh, bias. It's the same same idea. So now, if we go back to the to the schematics, so what I'm saying is that the the feedback the feedback signal should be in phase with this signal, the one coming to the grid. This one, the one at the grid here. This signal should be in phase with that signal. So for that to happen, remember that we have an inversion here. From here to here, there's a one inversion. And I'm going to have to assume that there is an inversion also here at the, the, at the transformer, so that it's in phase. So I think I'm right. But I mean, I could be wrong, but I think uh, what I'm saying is correct. That OK, I'm going to stop here. And I think that's, I think I'm done with the 5F1. So I'll uh, see you around. Bye.